I just wanted to share with you guys uh, what the Lord had given me this morning. Um, I've been, I sit on words for years. And this particular one I've been sitting on for probably about a year. And uh, whenever the Lord calls forth for a word, I don't take it lightly. I usually just um, try to meditate on it until he gives me a fullness of understanding of what he's saying to his church. And uh, it's very clear to me that there's some things that are going on in the body. So I, I know that my calling is not, I'm not the every Sunday uh, pastor preacher, right? I'm the every year pastor prophet that comes to you and says, this is what thus saith the Lord. <laughs> that's what this is right now. And so what he was speaking to me is that there's something that's happening in the body of Christ that, um, that we need to catch a hold of. And um, it's, it's, it's as if like what I was seeing was, and we, call, we use the word, we use the term undercurrent, right? We use this term undercurrent. But what he said to me was is that it wasn't an undercurrent, it's poison. And so he said, I want you as a prophet of God, I want you to come and deal with poison. And he told me, he said, it's not about just dealing with it. He said, I want you to teach and preach about how to get rid of it, how to loose it, how to remove it, because it's seeping into our lives. I'm watching the body of Christ go through this motion of like apathy, like where we are. We're excited about God when he's doing something great for us. And we're excited about God when God is doing something phenomenal in our lives, but the excitement seems to wane when hardness comes. And we haven't quite yet learned how to endure hardness like a good soldier, how to put on our armor and really go to battle, not only for ourselves, but for our neighbor. <laughs> Come on, I need a church. I need a church. Go to battle for your neighbor. It's not just about us. It's about the people that are crashing and burning around us. And it's not about just bringing a good meal over and saying, ha, 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 we, we love you and we fellowshipping with you. But it's about when there's correction that is needed and a rebuke that's needed, sharply given, then we must do so. When it's get up, get up out of the sick bed, when it's that moment, when we say, okay, you know what? I know the healing hasn't sprung forth the way that we wanted to, but it's time to get up. We need some people to bring some people into the church to say, you know what? You've been, you've been, you've been holding on to this just a little bit too long. I'm going to bring you in on your bed of affliction. Sit you in front of the congregation and say, until you get up, we're going to keep praying, right? We need some old school back. For real, some laboring, some praying, some saying that, you know what, until you get up, until you really actually receive, I'm with you. I'm not going to chase you down with uh, pity. I feel like I had enough of that. <laughs> Don't pity me. Don't pity me. Don't pity me. I don't need no Mr. T's up in here. Don't pity me. What do you say? Pity the fool. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 through 40. And we're going to deal with today how to get rid of poison. Amen. Are you there? Yeah, y'all don't have leaves no more. Y'all got phones. We're going to 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 38 through 40. So I can't listen to hear the leaves not turning any longer. Amen. And Elijah came again to Gilgal. And there was a dearth in the land, meaning a famine. We're in 2 Kings 4, 38 through 40. And Elijah came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth or famine in the land. And the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and said unto his servant, set on a great pot, or he said, put some food on, right? Seed the pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine, somebody underscore wild vine, and gathered there of wild gourds, his lap was full of them and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, and they knew them not. They didn't know that he had put that into the pot. So they poured out for the men to eat, and it came to pass as they were eating the pottage that they cried out and said, O oh, thou man of God, this is death in the pot, poison in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. But he said, bring me some meal then. And he cast it into the pot, and he said, pour out for the people and they may eat, and there was no harm in the pie. So how do you get rid of poison? Okay, 
So first of all, the first thing that happened in this particular passage of scripture is that they had to recognize that there was death in the pot in the first place. There's poison in the pot. You have to look around. You have to assess the, uh, like, you know, I tell people, I was laughing because I always talk about this in the office. I said, I don't know if I really have the gift of discernment, but I do know I have the gift of observation. <laughs> I can observe the heck out of some, some circumstances and some placements. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking something ain't right here. Don't quite know what it is, but something ain't right. And I want ju- to charge you today that when you're sitting in places and you feel like something ain't right, make a move. Go with your gut. Because that's really the Holy Ghost checking you. He's saying something to you. And sometimes we ignore that check and we go, I'm just, you know, because they're so nice. They speak to me so kindly. They do things so well. But at the same time, they, they checking you too. They checking you too. They checking you too. So poison. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. And I just want to teach for a second. And it, it's, it's in this scripture. I want to talk about the types of poison real quick, too, before we get into, because sometimes unless we recognize what kind of poison there is, we don't really know what we're dealing with, right? And so I hope that maybe some of this checks some things that are around you. Maybe it'll check some things that are in you. I'm not sure. But hopefully it'll check some things that are around you. But in Proverbs 6, 6, 16 through 19, when you read this particular scripture, um, one of the things that it says is that there are six things that the Lord hates, right? And there are seven that are an abomination to him. And what I realized as I was reading this through this, this time period is that we often think that there are six things that he lists below those scriptures are the six things that he hates. And then the seventh thing is the abomination. It's not. So when you get a chance to go back home and read this, look up. Those are the six things that he hates in the verses above the 12 through 15. He hates those things. The seven that I'm getting ready to list to you are the abominations. These are the things that he just absolutely deplores. He just, I, I just, it's poison to God. And so it says, one is a proud look, right? I mean, you're looking at folks and you got your nose in the air and you're thinking that I'm better than them. And we, we think, well, I possibly can't be me, right? But when we're looking at, let me give you some examples really quickly because we're kind of going through this right now. Anti-vaxxers versus vaxxers. I'm vaccinated. I'm better. I'm not vaccinated. I'm standing on faith and in the glory of God. Nose up. That's, all, that's, that's something that God is checking right now on the earth because that's ungodly. It's ungodly. A proud look, a lying tongue. We ain't got to give no definition to that. A lying tongue is just a lying tongue, right? Amen. And hands that shed innocent blood. That's a bad justice system as well. Amen. Anytime that you can, you can be angry over a church that's saying that they protest the fact that someone has shot somebody down and gunned them down and you are saying that you shouldn't protest, you shouldn't say nothing about that. That's not God. Then this is, this is a hand that shed it innocent blood. And if you troll that direction with them, then you are saying that that innocent blood wasn't worth anything. You are siding against God saying that you're with God. These are hard truths for what the church is saying that he's dealing with. What God is saying, I'm dealing with my church. Now, there's a pseudo church, too, because there's a church that's inside of the church that ain't the real church. Well, amen. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. And what the Lord said to me about this is that this is dealing with malice, right? You devise wicked ma- imaginations. You think things in your mind against people. You think in your mind that, well, this is what they did to me. I'm going to get them back. One day, this is going down like this. One day, I'm going to get them back. Or you wait until they fall. And you go, ha. Huh? You don't want to say it really out loud because you also know the scripture that the Bible says that if you say ha, then it's coming for you next, right? So you don't say it out loud, but your heart is saying that's what they get. Come on, church. This is, this is what God is chasing down in us. These are heart issues. These are things that are on the inside of us that sometimes we don't like to talk about. We like to talk about the fornicator, the adulterer, the person who's actually committing the sins, the gross sins, right? She came to church pregnant. Those kind of sins we like to deal with. But the Bible is, he's, he's chasing this poison that is on the inside of us, and it's on the inside of the body of Christ. And how did it get in here? It was sold in here. Somebody brought it in. Whispered it into your ear. Fear. 
feet that are swift to run to mischief. I always say this to the young people, when somebody fighting at school, run from the fight. Don't go film the fight. Feet that are running swift to mischief. You always wanna be in the know. Always wanna hear the answer that somebody else is saying to you. Always wanna know exactly what's going on. That is the gossip. Those are the things that, that check, that get, us, that get us caught off course. This is, this is not the easy message. This is, I, I always feel like God, I, maybe I should give a disclaimer. I really love y'all. <laughs> We give a disclaimer because this is these are hard truths because these are truths that not only God is dealing with our church about and I know he's coming after refuge and restoration because if he sent me up here then he's saying that I'm going after R&R because there's some poison in the camp a false witness that speaketh lies so let me explain a false witness to church folks false witness to church folks it wasn't you weren't at the scene of the crime right so you ain't no witness you weren't there. You can't give an account of what happened. So if you give an account of what happened at some crime or some incident that took place, you are a false witness. Do not give information that you did not get firsthand. You're witnessing that false, because guess what? Your idea about it, the way you filtered it, the way you think you saw it, you didn't see it that way because you weren't there. So when you give us information and you say to us, I think this is how they feel about that. I think this is what they're saying about that. You are out of line. You are becoming a false witness in the midst of people that you're supposed to be edifying. And we must. And those who sow discord among the brethren, right? We used to think that that was the seventh thing that God had an abomination towards, but it's all in them. So discord, disharmony, that's your whisperers. That's your people that's asking, listen, I, I find it, see people don't know what you know about what you know, right? And so I find it fascinating because I got the gifts of observation. This is, you know, I'm, I'm, I, we all call it the gift of discernment, but mine is the gift of observation. I watch people whisper, pull off in corners and say stuff. And you're going like, what is that? Like, what is that? But it's disharmony. It's disharmony when we pull off from one another and we go, well, what did you think about that? Oh, I'm coming. Listen, last year I got beat the hell up by a devil. And this year I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> I'm coming for you. This is what, so it's, what did you think about that? When you, uh, when you, when you, when you heard her say that, what were your thoughts about that? Oh, you ain't slick. You ain't slick, you ain't slick, you ain't slick. You're sowing discord. But in a slick way, because you seem nice. What did you, what were your thoughts behind that when she said that? Why didn't you ask her? Or him? Why you didn't go to them and say, hey, what exactly do you mean by that? Because that's what I would do. That's what I do. That's how I offend some of y'all. I go, what is, what is that? <laughs> what are you saying about that? Why do you feel that way? I would like to know. Inquiring minds would like to know. Like, what is it that you're trying to accomplish when you go behind people and, and sift? Because really, that's sifting. I want to make it plain this morning. And for those of you that are watching online, I, I hope that you're grabbing a hold of the fullness of what is being spoken, because sometimes in Online, it can get a lost in a little bit in translation. But if you got questions, you ain't got to ask nobody else. You just call me. Just call me. Just call me. Discord. Words. Words. So we look at, and I want to I deal with this too really quickly because these are the kinds of poison. Because when we look at the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, the types of poisons that are in there are, are fleshly things, right, that we deal with on a daily basis. Well, one of them is witchcraft. And we often think of witchcraft as just someone, uh, like I used to say all the time, somebody with a cauldron or a pot or staring, you know, and saying like, you know, like, like spells, all that's in there too. But the most thing that witchcraft deals with is words. Delilah wouldn't have been able to kill Samson. She wouldn't have been able to get away with that if it hadn't been for her words. She just seduced him right on into his hair being cut. And that's what's happening to some of us. 
lulling you right into sleep. You just believe any lie that anybody come up and tell you. I don't think that they should be doing that. I think this is how this should go. Just lulling you right to sleep. You don't even know that they're pushing you further and further. We, we looking at you and we're thinking that, hey, you know what? It'd be great for you to be promoted into this position. But the person who's envious of you, jealous of you, hateful over you, they saying to you, I just, you know, I just don't know if they see you. I'm coming for you. So you got to cry out. So this is how you get rid of poison. You recognize it first. The next thing you do is you cry out and then you expose it. You confront poison. You look in the pot and you call it what it is. It's poison. It's poison. We got to deal with our own vessels first. We got to look into our vessels and say, you know what? It's me. It's me, oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayers. Nobody else. I'm the one who's actually, I'm con confused often. Oftentimes I have insecurities or things that I'm dealing with. If we deal with our own pot, right? If we just simply say, you know what? I don't like anybody. I don't want to be bothered with anybody. I don't want to be, I don't want to be, I, you, you don't realize that that's poison in your pot. You think it's just personality. I just, you know, this is just, you know, everybody in the world makes me sick. You just, you just, <laughs> Y'all laughing, but I'm so real. It's so real. It's so real. Listen, I, I get the benefit. This is the, the blessing of being um, a pastor who is open. But I get the benefit of hearing all the complaint. I get the benefit of being able to hear all. And then sometimes if you ain't complete, your face is saying it. While we're looking at you, you're just like, I just can't stand all y'all. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But God wants the poison out of us so that we can really be true vessels of honor unto God, doing good so that our Heavenly Father is pleased and so that others would see our good works and then glorify Him. <laughs> but if we're always poisonous, if we're always on the back end just screaming, uh, you know, what, what in the world is going to happen if, if, if it's not about me? It's such a selfishness in the body, and that's where the poison comes from, is because I've, I've just been so engrossed in me. Words. Words are witchery. Words put you to sleep. Words, they, listen, when, when the enemy came into the camp to sow those tears into the field, and you can read this story in your own too, but when he sowed those tears into the field, when you look up the word tears, it doesn't mean um, like you're just seeing like some horned devils just walking around saying that I'm not like you and I'm, I'm against you. No, these tears let off toxins. And those toxins, when you look it up, they put you to sleep. That's why we got a generation without Christ who's saying, I'm woke, but they sleep. A whole woke generation sleep. Not realizing that the spiritual things that God is after, we, we dismiss. We go, you know, we don't really need that anymore. We don't need to be praying about that no more. We don't be fasting about that no more. I've got the answer. I know the solution. I'm going to put it on paper, and I'm going to map it out, and I'm going to be able to tell you exactly what to do. No, you're not. Not without God. Not without God. We're not. So we receive information wrongly. It's like having a bad computer, bad hookup. You got, you got a corrupted file, right? It's just like with a computer. You got a corrupted file in a computer. You can go no further until you fix the corruption in that file. And some of us are stuck because there's a corrupted file on the inside of us and we're screaming out and we're saying, God, please, 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 why am I, why am I in this rut? Why am I in this position? There's a corrupted file in there. You need a data dump. You overload it with bad, sad, and difficult and hard information. And so everybody around you is saying, I really want to, I, I want to, I want to expose this and I want to deal with it. But at the same time, I'm scared to deal with it too because the very people that are around me, I'm scared they're going to use it against me. I'm afraid to deal with my own vessel in front of the people that are supposed to be loving and kind and bless God with me. There's a scripture in the Bible that talks about the fact that, um, I think it's Psalms 55, I'm not really sure, I'll look it up, but it says that it wasn't my enemy that harmed me. It was a person I was going to the temple with every day and we was fellowshipping together 
and they use my stuff against me. They harm me, harm me. Cry out and expose what's in the pot. And then the next thing you gotta do when you're gonna get rid of poison is stop eating that. Stop, just stop, stop eating that, don't eat that. And then the last thing that I wanna deal with, there's another thing, but I don't think I'm gonna get into that. Y'all might get out of church early today, right, amen. <laughs> we wanna fill the pot with something that takes or overtakes the poison, okay? The prophet threw meal into the pot, right? And there's a whole discussion around that, a whole teaching around that about what the meal offering really is, but I'm not gonna go into that. I just wanna keep it simple and talk about the practical things. But he said, cry out over this poison, but at the same time, fill the pot with something that overtakes the, pot, the poison. So you have to fill up on the Holy Spirit through the word of God. This is just a simple message. So you can produce a counter serum or the antidote. Okay, he's given us the counter serum of the antidote. It's through love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Those things push poison out faster than you can say poison. When we love people, when we just got joy, when we just start long-suffering. I don't care what you've been through, who you've been with, all the things that, you, that you're upset about or complaining about. The peace of God can still surpass that or overcome that. But one thing we have to deal with in order for us to push the poison out is we gotta deal with our capacity, okay? So I'm gonna give you some examples. Once a clothing piece has been stretched out of shape, right? It's no longer that size again. You can't make it small again. So if you got a big shirt, right, at home, and, it's, and you're you little, right? You put that on, you can't fill it up, bottom line. If I'm, if I, like this, this, this dress I think is cute, right? <laughs> I can't, I can't, if, if I wanted to wear a size two, I couldn't. That's all I'm trying to say, is that once it's been put into a different kind of shape, there's no putting it back, there's no putting it back at all. So it's the same way what God does with us spiritually, when he builds capacity in us. When he starts building capacity in us, once it's stretched out or enlarged the capacity that God has for us, you can't fit a smaller size. You have to feel that capacity now. And here's the hard part for us is that once God has stretched us out, we still trying to be small. Example, a person who's grown to a larger size is no longer able to fit the small person's clothing, right? When he stretched you out in areas, you'll never be the other size again. You're not going back. You can't unknow what you know. You can't unsee what you saw. <laughs> and you can't undo what you've done in Christ. You can't. And this is a hard truth for us because the way that God usually stretches us is through pain. And that's the thing that we run from. It's hard for us because we think that pain is a curse instead of actually a course. So when God is stretching you, we, we, just, we just feel like, God, I can't, I can't believe that you're putting me through this. I can't believe. And he's not putting you through anything. You're going through something. He's not putting you through it. You're going through it. It's called growth. So in order for us to know us, know him in the fellowship of his sufferings, how are you going to understand him in the power of his resurrection if we don't know the pain? The gospel that we preach in the United States is not the gospel that can be preached in any other country because it's soft. I can't go to a third world country and preach to you about prosperity and you're living in a shack. Do you understand? Capacity. But yet some of the same people that are in the poorest of countries have much more capacity than us as our Western Americans. They got capacity to believe through pain. They've been built up through pain. They understand how to endure. They understand perseverance. They understand how that when it ain't going my way, I'm still gonna trust God. Western way is that if it ain't working out for me, then this pain and this suffering, God, God forbid, that cannot be the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know it's hard. I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. 
I know it's hard, but it's, it's not a curse. It's to stretch you. We're always crying out, like J-Raz, enlarge my territory, right? We want to be enlarged. We want our tent to be enlarged. We want to pick up our stakes and be enlarged. But God is saying that it is through the sufferings that you know me. It is through the pain and the understanding of what rejection really feels like. It's that when you, when you want somebody to want you, when you want to be on their deck and you want like, hey, you know, hey, receive me, receive me, receive me, receive me, receive me. And they're going, no, 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 no. And you're thinking in your mind, like, this has got to be a curse. And God is saying that, no, it is your promotion. I'm bringing you up. I really am. Everybody in the world that I keep listening to keeps preaching the same message about this idea that we keep searching or wanting someone to receive us. But yet we don't fight that hard to be received by Jesus. He is the one who's the author and the finisher. He's stretching us for growth's sake, not for our own sake, but for growth's sake. So if you don't fill up on God, you will be empty in spaces. And that's why many of us are wandering with an A and wandering with an O. So you're wandering around and you're wondering, what, what, you know, what can God do with me? What can God? And that makes you susceptible to poison. Your capacity is larger than what you're filling up with, and you don't even know it. They looking at you going like, you big. You big, girl. You are big in the spirit, man of God. But you, on the other hand, and what they want to fill it up with is poison. God wants to fill it up with him. But because you don't know your capacity... Because you don't know that you are biggest life. You don't know that you really actually, when you speak and when you say things, they actually happen. You don't know that about yourself. The enemy knows how to shut you down. So he poisons you against yourself. You don't know that you're the elder of elders. You don't know it. So then he whispers in your ear, you ain't nothing. They don't listen to you. susceptible to poison. Your growth is large, but you're not full to overflowing. So instead of giving out, you extract, trying to fill your own emptiness. So you're going from vessel to vessel, and instead of actually because you filled up to overflowing and you're pouring out, you come and you extract. Trying to fill your own emptiness with people with low capacity. So you're going to people with low capacity, trying to fill up big capacity, and becoming more and more poisonous and more and more venomous as the day grows long, right? You pull and you pull till you wear them to stank out. <laughs> and they tired of you because they're looking at you and they're going, you are big. Why you keep coming to this little vessel right here trying to get all you can get out of it? Come on, somebody, get this, get this. But because you won't fill up on God, you yourself, you look like you're lazy and greedy to them. Catch that. For real. When you are, just, I just, I wish I had some pots up here that you could see this. When you see a big pot in the middle of the room that's looking for the little pot to fill it up, what happens to the little pot that keeps trying to fill this big pot back up? They're going back and forth, 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 and they're like, I'm tired of you. I'm of low capacity, and when I say capacity, what I mean is spiritually. You know more than me spiritually. You've been around longer than me spiritually. You've been anchored more than I have spiritually. When the older women should be teaching the younger women, you are pulling from me when I am of low capacity. I need to be coming to you, pulling out of you what you got. You're a big vessel. You look lazy and greedy to those people who are of low capacity. When I just got here last week. And you didn't already call me with some poison? Ha! Ooh. I just got here. I just got here. I just settled in. I'm chasing poison, y'all. And already I know how crazy everybody is up in here. Bam! <laughs> How is it that you know everything about everybody already in here and you've been here one day? I'm chasing something. I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. I'm coming after it. I promise you. How is it that this kind of thing happens in the church of God? Right? You're big. 
You a vessel. You a vessel of honor. Mighty God put you up. You, you really look like gold to everybody else, but you're tarnishing yourself with this poison, with this venom. And God is saying that you, you, you're bigger than that. You're bigger than that. You're bigger than that. So the prophet got as many wild gourds as he could fit, right? So he just piled them all up, right? In that scripture, he just piled them all up into his apron. And he was like, and I'm going to feed them to everybody. But listen, I just want to let you guys know that whatever's in your overflow, you're going to feed somebody. We got to get rid of the corrupted files. Whatever's in your overflow, you're going to feed. Whatever is in you, you're going to let out. Ken preached this last week. He said, we're out of the abundance of the heart, right? The mouth going to speak. So whatever it is, if I'm, I'm just living in a space where I'm just, I'm just sick of everybody, guess what you're going to do? You're going to blast everybody. You're going you're gonna to make everybody sick. Thank you, Sarah. You're going to make everybody sick because you're sick. <laughs> Some of us actually don't know that our capacity is gallons, but we, our mind still thinks we're a pint. Your mind think you little, but you really are big. And I want to encourage those of you that are, you, you, you're building something. You're bigger than, than where you think you are. You, are. you are greater than what you think you are. You're not a pint anymore. You're not. You're not little anymore. You keep living low, never experiencing the overflow of God. And it's in the overflow that everyone drinks and no one feels like they gave too much. It's in the overflow that you feel like you've not given over that. And if you feel like you give more, this is something that we hear in church all the time, right? I feel like I'm giving more than what I'm putting out. Who's going to pour into me? I'm always depleted. I'm always giving out. I love more than anybody else loves me. I sacrifice more than anybody else sacrifices. I'm putting all of me out here, and it seems like nobody else is putting anything back. Well, that probably means one of two things, and I'm going to leave you with this, is that either you're delusional and really you're sucking the life out of everybody around you, or you're not maximizing your capacity. You're living beneath the capacity that God has called you to. You're living below that. I don't want to belabor you because I don't want to go into all the meal offering and all of that. I just, I just feel like God is saying that we have to deal with the poison. We have to deal with the fact that um, the way that I think about me is what's causing me to create chaos all around me. It's only the way I think about me. It's not anybody else. Stop thinking that it's somebody else, that somebody else is, 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 is causing you harm, or I, I want to get it out your mind that somebody else is poisoning somebody for you. You doing that. You doing that. It's on you. It's on you. And so I just am going to ask today, before we go into prayer, um, and so that it's not embarrassing anyone, if you feel like you have been poisoned, or maybe you are poisoning people, but we're gonna stand together with it. We not that way we don't have to separate the two. We just gonna be able to what is what is keeping me from seeing my capacity? And we know that it's poison, right? We know that. So if you feel like that today, you can play. It's fine. Then we are just gonna ask you, I just wanna pray. Because we got we to gotta, we gotta push the poison out with love and joy and peace and long-suffering. And we have to be able to look at our neighbors in a way that says that I love you so much that even in your poisonous state. This is something that happens to me a lot is that sometimes you can look like you are um, loyal to people who are disloyal because you've decided that you're just going to love no matter what, no matter what. Don't matter if they look like witches, if they look like crazies, if they look like they demonically possessed. I'm just going to love you regardless. And that hurts because sometimes people look at that and they think that, well, you're choosing sides. I'm choosing Jesus' side. I'm choosing the side of Jesus. And Jesus is saying to me that I have the power to be able to, I, I'm, we are healers. You can push poison out. You can push poison out. You can push it out. 
You've got the power to push poison out. So I'm just asking those of you that feel like maybe you feel like you have been poisoned. And when I say poisoned, I mean that there's been some things that have made you turn back or stay in a rut or sit still and not move. Um, you feel like, you know, like I've, I've been um, wanting to see things change, but at the same time, I feel like I'm just, I am stuck. That's poison. That's poison. You can just stand up. Just stand up. Either one. Doesn't matter if you feel like, hey, you know what, I've just been spewing craziness, right? And I've just been a hot mess for how long ever I've been a hot mess. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to confess today that there was a time when I was just bitter, right? Just bitter. Just spewing bitterness and just was like, I'm just, and then that's when the Lord started talking about this to me. It was like, are you delusional, Beverly, or are you living below your capacity? And I was both delusional and living below my capacity. <laughs> Amen. 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 I want to pray also, though, for it's another audience that needs a Holy Ghost conviction over how you speak the way you operate the Lord I pray Lord Jesus that you would begin to uh, convict us all of our speaking how we say things what we say how it affects others Lord Jesus father I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you send a meal offering among us God especially at r, &R. send a meal offering God that it pushes all the poison to the surface that we may then be able to partake of what's in the pot fully lord we just thank you father i thank you for those that are standing right now god i pray right now god that your love your peace your joy your long suffering your temperance that it overtakes their vessel that it allows them to see clearly god and to see what's around them what what exactly is coming into the vessel what am i letting in what am i letting in that i need to push out what am i letting in that i need to confront and speak to and speak over what is it that i'm letting in that i need to boldly pronounce and profess and deal with god i thank you 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 for giving ear god and clarity god to those spaces lord jesus we just bless you for today god father i pray that this message father that it don't fall on deep deaf ears god but that the understanding of who you are and what you want to accomplish in us is greater than what it is that we want to accomplish in ourselves so father i just bless you for that today i thank you for it just honor you god with all of my heart god i just thank you thank you thank you thank you in jesus name in jesus name amen 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 amen